Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for hopping on. My name is Ryan Semenyema. I'm a fourth year radiography student based in Nigeria and also a medical writer and also a YouTuber. So today I have an amazing, amazing guest speaker all the way from the UK. Um, Aisha, could you introduce yourself to the audience? Yeah, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Aisha. I am a pediatric trainee doctor in the UK. Uh, I'm also founder of a company called Awakened, which is a health education platform for black and brown women, um, mainly looking at um, supporting people in looking after the newborns. Um, and I do a bunch of other stuff with like medical education and art, and I've got lots of interests, but those are the main two. <laughs> <laughs> amazing, amazing, amazing. So uh, thank you so much for introducing yourself, Aisha, to the audience, and I believe that, you know, the the to get to know you right now. So um, we have a couple of questions for you to answer. You ready? Mm -hmm. ready? All right, so I, I wrote down the, the questions on the piece of paper and I will always be looking down words. So you guys have been wondering why is Ryan Small always looking down words for us? So I've told you the disclaimer. I've told you the reason why I'm no longer looking down words. I'm not looking down words just to look down words and re reading the questions to Aisha. So yeah. So the first question for you, Aisha, is interesting question. All right, so what really inspired you to pursue a career in pediatrics, and how has your journey been so far? Talk us there. Um, so I have wanted to do pediatrics probably about as long as I've wanted to be a doctor. Um, I think the, the two came together. Uh, I always had an interest in working with children. Uh, I spent a lot of my um, volunteering time working with children, so play groups and drama clubs and music and that kind of stuff through my church. Uh, when I got into medical school, actually, I didn't enjoy my paediatric rotation at all, uh, and it completely put me off doing paediatrics. Then once I started working as a doctor, uh, I did a few rotations and got to the end of that time and wasn't really happy like with the, the specialties that I'd that I thought that I liked I was I'm a very organized person so kind of had a plan of where I thought I'd want to go but then an opportunity opportunity came up to work in pediatrics for a few months and I thought I'll just give it one more go and I did it I loved it and that's that was kind of the end really um and so yeah then applied for training got in and I've been a trainee ever since Oh, amazing, 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 amazing. So that is an amazing story, you know, that really inspired you to pursue a career in pediatrics, which is an amazing thing to do. Um, and you're joining as well so far. So and before yeah. proceeding to the next group, I hope you're yeah. enjoying the, the training. Long, yeah, the journey's been quite an interesting one because I, um, like I said, I kind of came to pediatrics full circle so I thought I wanted to do it then thought oh, maybe not and I kind of came back to it again um in terms of the journey so far so I am I'm halfway through um my training program now and it's been it's not been easy um I think medical training in the UK is quite long um it's got its negatives mainly and it's this is regardless of specialty so mainly around things like having to rotate jobs every six months um, uncertainty about where you're going to work. It's a different department. You have to get used to new people all the time. And just all of that team dynamic, I think, makes training in the training system in the UK quite difficult. Uh, the journey on the whole has been good. So I, I, I enjoy my job. I am happy with the specialty that I've chosen. I think with any job, there are elements that you like and you don't like. So for me, that is um, neonatology. Uh, I don't particularly enjoy. And for people that aren't familiar with neonatology, that's working with preterm babies. Um, they're just very, I mean, I, yeah, it's just a side of the specialty that I just don't enjoy. Um, but actually it takes up quite a bit of your training. So the advice yeah. that I always, the advice that I always give to people who are thinking about doing pediatrics, um, often when you think about pediatrics, you think about kind of, you know, teddy bears and playing games and you know it being a really fun environment which it which it is and it can be um but actually the kids are really really sick 
Um, and it's not always fun. It's not always nice, um, particularly in neonatology where they're really preterm, they're really, really sick, they're really unstable. Um, there can be quite a lot of um, heartache, even when, you know, even when the babies do do well, it's a, you know, it's a big emotional journey for you to go on as a doctor and obviously for the parents whose child it is that you're looking after. Um, so my advice to people who are thinking about doing paediatrics is to not forget neonatology especially if you're training or thinking of training in the UK, because that makes up a big chunk of our workload. Um, and it, it has its good bits as well, but um, I think that's been my biggest challenge. And I think the other challenge for me has been trying to pursue other interests outside of my um, outside of my training programme, uh, because I think the idea is you kind of get on the path and you, you stay on the path till the end. Um, and I've taken quite a lot of time out of training to do different things, um, which has made my training time even longer amazing amazing you, you know other than your work in pediatrics there are other passions you you know you love to lay your hands on which is an amazing thing you're doing you know you just have to diverge a little bit because you have other passions apart from your passion for pediatrics you know so you know thank you so much for talking us through about your journey so far as a pediatric trainee and it's amazing to hear that you've you know, getting closer to the end of your session, your training, you know, your training awesome. uh, in, in projects, you know, wishing you all the best. So that drives me to the next question for you, Aisha. All right, tell us more about the mission and the vision of your company and what motivated you to start. Tell us, tell us, tell us more. Um, so, so like I said in my intro, so Awakened is a health education platform for black and brown parents uh, with a focus on postnatal care. So that is the education that you receive once you've had a baby and you're at home in the community, um, things to look out for for that first few months, the first year of life. Uh, and my passion for that came out of personal and professional, my personal and professional life. So again, within my clinical practice, I spend a lot of time looking after babies, um, checking that babies are all right, dealing with sick babies, educating parents. And it's just, um, it's been a point of frustration of mine, how little support, again, specifically in the UK, um, but it might be, a, I think it's probably a global problem, but how little support there is out there for parents once they've had a baby. So when you are in the pregnancy phase, there's lots of, you know, classes and support groups you can go to and people selling you stuff and conferences, even like the baby shows. And once you have a baby, there's no one to tell you, you know, how to look after it. If your baby's sick, what to look out for. You kind of have to work out on your own. And I knew this clinically in my practice. And then I became a parent. And then it, it became real. I was like, oh, my goodness. And bearing in mind... Uh, as, as someone working in paediatrics, I probably came into the process way more informed than an average mum. And I still found it hard. So I thought to myself, if I'm finding it hard, how much worse is it for someone who doesn't have, um, you know, a medical background or a education background, you know, like a teacher, a teaching background or a midwifery background and someone to help them. And so that's that's kind of where that passion came out of. And the reason I'm specifically focusing on black and brown parents is because we know that in the UK and again, globally, that actually in terms of health outcomes, that patient population does worse, especially if you don't speak English as a first language living in this country. If you are um, from a black or Asian background, whether you were born and bred here or whether you're new to the country, um, parents tend to do worse and the children tend to do worse. Um, so that's that's kind of where the passion and the focus and the aim of this this company that I'm trying to develop is, is just to help educate parents better to be able to Amazing. look after their parent to be able to look after their kids um, and be able to know um, how to seek help when they need it. Amazing, you know that 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 vision and that mission of yours, you know, to find that amazing company awakened. You know, it's amazing and. It is really saddening that there are little supports out there, you know, in terms of patient um, parents and with kids as well. And um, so I, all I'm saying to you right now is I'm wishing you all your best, all the best 
<laughs> you know, to, you know, keep pushing. I know it's not easy all to, you know, keep pushing about, you know, this vision you have and this mission to make it a reality in this present age. You know, it's, 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 it's very difficult sometimes, but you just have to, you know, keep pushing. But the sweetest part of it is you, you're in the situation already. So it, it makes it more easy, simpler for you to keep pushing as well. <laughs> so I wish yeah. your team um, the best of our best. And I know that the audience as well, I'm really proud of you for implementing such amazing and finding such amazing company name that we can, you know, to support black and brown, you know, parents with kids as well, you know, which is an amazing thing to do. You know, so that draws me to the next question for you, Aisha. Okay, all right. The questions are getting more interesting, right? All right, so as an NHS clinical entrepreneur, how do you balance your entrepreneur nurtures with your medical training? What do you have uh, it's not that? easy. It's not easy. Uh, so um, the question is about the NHS Clinical Entrepreneur Program, which is um, a workforce development program that I'm on. I think a few of your previous guests are also on the program. Uh, it's really, really great opportunity. It's probably one of the best things that I've done in terms of my career moving forward and thinking about the other things I'm interested in. Um, so on the program, you get lots of access to support from um leaders in innovation in business and the idea is to kind of help you take your idea or your vision for a business or your existing business um and help it grow um with with the caveat that whatever it is you're doing is um aiming to have an impact on health health and the well-being of either patients or the workforce um and it's been great um the study days and everything are great uh from an entrepreneur business point of view I came into the program very much as a complete newbie I didn't know anything about business anything about innovation at all but I just had an idea and something that I wanted to try and bring forward and bring to life um there are people on the program who are much further ahead than me and that's that's fine um but actually the support that we receive is the same um balancing it between my work and parenting and all the other stuff isn't easy I basically just use all my spare time <laughs> that's that's what happens um so today is a classic example so today would be what you call a zero day for me so I've just finished a set of on calls um I've got a couple of days off and then I'll go into my next set of on calls so today is a business day um so where I'm doing stuff like this or um you know stuff in the background to try and help you know do all the nuts and bolts behind the scenes that try in terms of trying to get business going um a lot of that for me is around education and learning stuff because i have a lot to learn um and that's 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 it essentially it's just about i think for me as well it's been really important to try and be boundaried with my time so again like my little one is in nursery so i try and do all of this stuff when he's in childcare and i'm home alone and then you know, when he's home, I'm not thinking about work and I'm trying not to think about business stuff. I don't answer emails and stuff. And that's just like our time. Uh, I think that's probably the the way that I do it. Um, it's not easy. Um, and yeah, it's quite tiring, <laughs> if I'm honest. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how I balance it. So. I love the fact you're being truthful right now. I know it's not easy. <laughs> But you have no other choice, my boss just yeah. have to you then you have no other choice. You know, you have no other choice. And I know that you're ready for it. You were ready for it before you moved into that situation. And so I know you're way, way gonna do amazing things because you know, you're starting up that amazing company awakening because I I because I, I took a I did I did a research on that company, you know, which you're really you know, doing, I love the perspective of yours, you know, in terms of finding that company, you know, you pushing that as well, and also doing this balancing entrepreneur, you know, ventures with your medical training, it's, it's a little thing for you, you can't, yeah. I know, <laughs> I know you can move, you can move past it, it's just a normal, you know, challenge, you can just wash off immediately, because I know, you know, finding that such amazing company is not really easy, 
I love I love the way I'm hammering on that because I, I've spoken with a couple of people that founded amazing companies that at the long run they just dropped it off, you know, because of little no support. You know, so that's why I'm really hammering that because I know that there are not much support, but you your you keep your mission and visions about you know supporting black and brown <laughs> black and brown patients is really amazing so i'm wishing you all the best as well so that draws me to the next question aisha so what challenges did you face as a pediatric intern and how did you overcome them challenges you face as an intern oh so many uh especially especially with rotating all the time I think that's always a challenge from a life, trying to organise your life point of view, getting to know a new group of people and learning how to work with them very quickly in quite a high-performing team. Some of the biggest challenges I've faced um, are really around, I guess, something called like incivility, um, which is just people not being nice, is a, a simple simple way of explaining it um so i've definitely had um you know complaints made about me to my bosses before of you know oh she's she's too quiet or she's you know she's not vocal enough um but you know then when you drill down and you ask them about my work um there's you know there's not actually an issue with my work it's it's my personality or personality clashes and i think that's one of the difficulties with with working in teams with lots of different people um and especially where as a trainee where you you're the you're the person moving in and out and you know some of the the senior staff who have been there all the time you're kind of the stranger and i think that's always really difficult to navigate uh i think some of the other challenges uh that i've faced are around um just conflict with with parents and patients um either when I've gotten stuff wrong or um, the systems maybe not function in the way it should. A classic example is I do, I do a lot of work in paediatric a &E, so really long waiting times, it's really busy, parents are anxious and stressed and worried about their kids, um, and that can sometimes often, yeah, I say sometimes often, it, it can lead to conflict, um, either because they're just tired and frustrated or things haven't moved in the way that they, that they like, or sometimes because we've gotten things wrong and maybe haven't done things, you know, the way the way that we should or as fast as we should. Um, and that's always really difficult, uh, especially as I move a bit further on in my training. So as a junior, you could kind of be like, oh, you know, I'm really sorry. I'll go and get the bosses or someone to speak to you. Um, but more and more, that's people are coming to me <laughs> to be that to be that person as I get more senior. There is always someone else to escalate to, um, which is always important to remember. Um, I think those are the those are the hard things, and ultimately, like just dealing with sick kids, because that is the job. Um, but sometimes it is really, really difficult. Um, you know, there's times at work where you're standing there and you're just kind of going, you know, you don't know what to do, but you're like, okay, right, got to do something, just got to deal with it, just got to process. Um, you know, deal with what's in front of you at the time, and then kind of sit down and process and, and debrief after um that can be really really hard i think um yeah hmm. you know, thank you so much for pointing out the challenges you faced as a patriotic in intern and how you've tried to overcome them and i believe that other trainees in different medical specialties other than you know pediatrics you know that you're facing a lot of things and you know it's, it's just it just left for you to do the thing because nobody's going to do that for you you know mm -hmm. if you're facing a lot of things <laughs> unless you, you have a mentor or something you know if you're yeah. only the person that feel you have to you have no other choice than to you know face it and i know that you're going to overcome it you know like for instance, you know, Aisha is, is a testament of the will that, you know, she's facing a lot of challenges and look at her, she's still pushing and she's at the end of her trainings as a pediatric intern. So that also a reminder for you all in any kind of thing you're doing, whether you're not in the medical aspect, once you, you know, keep doing what you're doing, facing all those things, you're gonna overcome. You know, the, the beginning is not always sweet, by the end is 
the sphere is private. So what advice would you give to future healthcare professionals who want to explore entrepreneurship alongside the clinical career? What are your thoughts on that? Advice? Um, I think that's going to vary depending on where you are. So I think if you are in the UK and you are working in the NHS, uh, either as um, you know, an allied healthcare professional, healthcare professional, or a patient, or a medical student, or a healthcare student, then if you're thinking about exploring entrepreneurship, I would just apply to the clinical entrepreneur program. Um, the application's open in October. I think that's the best way. Um, it's been amazing. There's lots of stuff I've learned and come across I would not know about otherwise. Uh, the other things I think is just speaking to people. Um, I think again, you know, you're it's it's really kind of networking and speaking to people who are different than you that opens your eyes to the possibilities of what's out there. So if it hadn't been for the fact that I came across other colleagues who were, you know, had side, you know, I think in in the pandemic, I feel like it was the thing where everyone went out and got a side hustle. Um, and, you know, some of those people are still doing those things and some aren't, but actually just the, that's what opened my eyes to be like, oh, actually there is other stuff that I can do outside of my day-to-day -day job that's still clinical and still helping people, but not, that's that's not just being in hospital. Um, and I think until you until you have that awareness that you, you know, you don't know what's out there. So I think that's important. Uh, the internet is a great resource. There's so much free free stuff available out there. So again, it depends on if you're thinking about clinical entrepreneurship or just trying to do something different in business. Um, in terms of generic business stuff, there's so much support on the internet that's free um, for people who are wanting to get started or find out a bit more. Um, but I think really talking to people um, is the main thing and trying to, trying to build a network um, of people who... Um, come from different backgrounds from me but kind of have the same vision I think that's really important I think that's one of the biggest things I've gotten out of the program um other advice I could give um just go for it I mean I'm, I'm very much at the early stages of my stuff in my business now um I'm nowhere near kind of ready to launch or anything yet but um it's really scary to start putting yourself out there and talking to people and <laughs> talking to people about it especially when you don't when you don't really have a anything to show them yet but just to go for it um because uh, there's no there's no love lost like the worst the worst that will happen is you know the business maybe might not go where I want to but I'll have still learn stuff on the way that I can take forward into something else so yeah just to go for it really amazing Aisha amazing thank you so much for being an amazing guest speaker Aisha and you've, you've been an amazing guest speaker to be honest and I believe that the audience are really enlightened about your narrative and those questions, you know, talking us through about your journey in pediatrics, you know, your challenges you've, you've faced as a pediatric intern and how you've overcome them, you know, talking us through about your amazing company, Outcan. I'm sorry, what? For no to get. Awakened. Awakened. <laughs> so sorry. It comes from a. Uh, just to explain, can explain the name a bit. So it's my husband's South African, and he's, oh, okay. he's coloured, he's coloured. Which again, if you don't know much about South Africa, they're like a, they're an actual racial group in South Africa. So you've got blacks, whites, Asians, coloured. Um, and so the language that they speak, it's a slang term in their language um, that basically means it means hello, my mother's child. So it's like a greeting of affection that you'd say to a friend. So, you know, it's like a bit like brother from another mother. Um, it's that kind of thing. So you're saying it's like, you know, you're, you're looking at your friend as, as you are as your family almost. Um, so the, the name of the company is, is derived from that. Um, but it also sounds like awake as in, to open your eyes and be awake. Yeah, you see, we can. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Aisha. So before we wrap up the session, in just one minute, what, what, what is your last word for the audience for wrap up the session? Uh, last word. Um, if you are a healthcare student, medical student, and you're not sure what specialty to do, and you want to stay in hospital, do pediatrics. It's one of the best specialties in medicine. Um, and if you are thinking about entrepreneurship, just just go for it. Just try it. I mean, the worst that can happen is is you fail, but then <laughs> at least you can learn something along the way. You if you fail. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah absolutely thank you so much Ice. so if you love this content do it to like share and subscribe as well and check your network hopefully showing your network really adore this video thank you Aisha. thank you everyone thanks